Hey everybody, so back here again. Uh, this time I'm with the K1 Max. So I've had the K1 since it came out, since it was released. Uh, unfortunately, that first one that I got had some pretty significant issues. Uh, all that dealt with the hot end, or I guess the tool head, the extruder had a lot of issues. They had maybe about two or three versions of the extruder. They seem to have sorted that out. They also had a brand new hot end um, that was uh, released and sent to me um, from, from Creality Support. Uh, unfortunately, it had a lot of issues with jamming and clogging. Um, so overall, it was a decent machine, but it had its issues. The other issue that it had is because the pulleys on the... the that first run of machines, the pulley was too large. So it supported high speeds, which was good. Um, but unfortunately, there was a lot of VFA, uh, just a lot of noise in the print if you were going too fast. So it did allow you to push speeds without you know, getting any layer shifts or anything like that. But unfortunately, you got VFA. So here's an example of what that VFA looked like on that first machine. And that's kind of like those little wiggly lines. Uh, and that's just caused by the vibration of the machine itself. And unfortunately, there's it's really hard to tune it out uh, To as far as with the slicer. One way to tune it out is by slowing it down. Uh, but the downside is, is that you introduce ghosting. So you kind of had to find a nice balance between ghosting and VFA. Uh, this was one of the first prints I did with that machine when I first got it. Now, this machine here is not the same machine that I had. This is actually the version 2 of that machine. Uh, and there's been two significant changes uh, to this machine. And those two changes did, at least in my mind, warranted me to update to that new machine. So the first change is with the hot end. So the hot end now comes with the, the K1C's unicorn nozzle. Um, this does allow for an easier swap. So instead of having to take the whole thing apart, mess with the heat sink, you just basically unscrew this, you know, pull it out and then put the new one back in. This should also help with heat creep, which unfortunately was an issue um, with the previous uh, hot end. Uh, heat creep is basically when the heat that's centralized at the bottom here, you know, where that ceramic heater is, and it basically creeps up and warms the, the upper part of this uh, I guess it's the heat break, or this is the heat break, or, you know, this, the top of, of this nozzle, causing the filament to melt and get jammed up here versus it, you know, being solid and then hitting, you know, basically this part around here and then melting there. So uh, it would cause a lot of issues. I had jams. Uh, typically, it only happened with longer prints, um, and that's normal because you're printing for a long time so that heat kind of accumulates. Uh, I'm hoping that this new style of hot end will eliminate that. But yeah, having to take away that or having to take apart that uh, hot end is not fun. So uh, the other significant change that they made is that they actually changed the size of the pulleys. So as you can see, these pulleys are a lot smaller now. So these two pulleys. Um, I want to say they changed the extruder, the, I'm sorry, not the extruder, the stepper motor too. Uh, to me, they look smaller, which would kind of make sense, make a less powerful, uh, or uh, in, uh, install a less powerful stepper motor for a smaller pulley. Uh, unfortunately, you're not able to pull, or to push, I should say, as much speed as the earlier versions, uh, which is fine. I mean, I'm not trying to set any records and I don't think anybody else is when people are printing with these machines they just want good prints uh, so the <clears throat> benefit of less VFA is uh, a lot more welcome than just being able to push speeds um, this is the same print that I printed on this newer machine um, as you can see there is still some VFA so I did not eliminate it completely and unfortunately, around the head, it looks like there's more VFA. But overall, the body, um, the body here, it, it just, it, 
is significantly reduced. I'm confident that I can hopefully eliminate even more of this VFA or completely eliminate it just by tuning the slicer. I'm not really going to mess with the machine itself. Uh, with the previous machine, I removed the AI, LARDA, the AI LiDAR because I didn't. I don't use Creality Print, so it was essentially useless. So I removed it just to, re to re kind of reduce some weight. Uh, messed around with some different lighter weight covers, which I just ended up going back to the stock one because the other ones were not pretty. Uh, and then I did actually remove, there's a, a screw or there's two springs in there that uh, hold the bushing in place. Uh, I did remove that because people were saying that it reduced VFA, which it did uh, to a small degree. Um, but in this case, just by changing that stepper motor, I'm sorry, not stepper motors, changing that pulley, uh, it has definitely helped. Again, it hasn't reduced the VFA completely, uh, but it has definitely significantly reduced it. Um, and that's just changes, uh, you know, straight out of the box. So no tuning, uh, no nothing. And this is black filament. Black filament shows everything. So it looks even worse on black filament. This is also another print I just did. This creepy looking Joy, which didn't realize that she would look so creepy, but I guess, uh, I don't know. Um, but anyways, it, it you can see it still has VFA. It hasn't eliminated it completely, but it is reduced. Um, and again, I still need to play around. Uh, with the slicer settings, the slicer settings that I have were the ones that I was using with the previous machine. So I did make a lot of tweaks, a lot of changes uh, to that profile. So I'll have to make some more. Um, the other thing I have, this is from Voxel. Hopefully you can see that. So that those are the Hulove anti-vibration feet that I did have installed on the previous machine. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure if that made a difference or not, or made it worse. Uh, I did improve, I mean, I'm sorry, I did install it on this machine just to see if it would help. So I, I do need to test it and just to see if it's helping or not. Maybe it might be causing that extra VFA, I don't know. Because um, one thing I did notice with this machine versus the other one is that this one moves a lot more. You probably can't see it there. Let's see. It just vibrates a lot more compared to the other one, the older one. I'm not sure if that's because this one is newer and everything is just kind of like tighter. I don't know. But uh, I would definitely recommend this machine now. Before it was a little hard to recommend, especially considering that you know the Bamboo Labs, uh, the X1 was out there and the P1. Um, those machines typically they've kind of sorted all those issues that they had with vfa because those machi machines had uh issues with vfa too at the beginning and it seems that they have been sorted out um so i, I was a little bit hesitant to to recommend this one and kind of uh, pushing people towards the bamboo lab machines uh, now with this machine if you are looking for a machine with a larger build volume uh, I would dec definitely recommend this one uh, simply now because it seems like a lot of the issues uh, that it had have been eliminated. Even though with this version, it's only a couple things that have been changed and updated, those changes are pretty significant. So uh, if you are in the market for a larger uh, Core XY printer or just a Core XY printer in general, uh, I would definitely recommend this one. It has a large build volume, so if you want to build helmets, uh, you can build helmets. And you know anything you want. Uh, I was also looking to see, see if there's been any changes inside. I don't see any other than this little trim piece that has the name and the build volume that wasn't there before. Uh, but I was trying to see if there's any changes because I know that the uh, multi-material system on the K2. It, uh, I've heard rumors that there's going to be a retrofit kit to put it on older machines, but I just don't know how that would work. I mean, essentially, I think you would have to change the com the hot end uh, the, or the tool head completely. And the K2 has like a hole in the back for the uh, 
you know, the filament that's, you know, that's thrown out from the back. Um, so I don't know. There's no poop shoot in here, so <laughs> I'm not sure how that's going to work. But uh, if they do release that multi-material system for this printer, I mean, I honestly think this would be the bigger, the, the, the best printer in terms of just price, size. Um, the software works really well. They're kind of using, I think it's like a knockoff of Clipper. Uh, you can, or it's Creality OS. Uh, you can put Clipper on there. I haven't done it. Uh, it seems like it's pretty easy, but I just have not found the need. Um, it prints well. The bed is not warped. Um, it it auto levels itself. There's no dealing with di with dials and all that stuff. Uh, so overall, I, I think it's a great printer. So if you are in again, if you are in the market for a Core X Y, you want something that prints nice, that prints fast, and has a large build volume, then I think this is the one. And you're not uh, looking for like a multi-material system just yet. Uh, yeah, I would recommend this one. I think this is a great printer, uh, especially this second version. So if you are going to purchase one, definitely make sure that it is the second version. Unfortunately, I don't have the box anymore. I do know that the box has like a teal kind of color on it, has some coloring on it. The original ones were all flat, uh, were black and just the you know cardboard. The newer ones, newer versions do have some color on it. So uh, if you are looking for that version too, uh, definitely ask the seller who you're buying from. Uh, and then you should be able to know right off the bat when you see the box, like if you're in a, a retail store, that box has has some color to it. But actually, it's the, this it's this color. So yeah, if you see the box, it'll have like, uh, oops, it'll have like the color, like a bluish teal. Uh, you can't really see it. It's, it's washed out. But yeah, that's the color that's on the box. So just be on the lookout for that. Uh, but that is all I have. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm trying to make more videos here about some of the printers I have. I still have that uh, S1 Plus with that uh, 3D fused um, linear rail system that was a complete nightmare. So I still have to go over that. It's been, <clears throat> uh, what is it, two years now? Um, and I just got replacement parts for it a few months ago. So yeah, it's been pretty interesting. Uh, I don't use that printer anymore simply because I have this one now, but uh, I have that one. And then I also have the CRM4 that uh, unfortunately it's so big that I have not been able to set it up. So I'm hoping that I can set that up and, and do some videos on that one too. But that is everything today. Thank you for watching. Bye.